The B.C. government says it will ban drug use in all public spaces. It is a major change to the province's drug decriminalization pilot program. Illicit drugs and hard drugs should not be used where kids are playing, where patients are recovering, where community life is lived. So under the new rules, if police find people using drugs in places like parks or hospitals, they can force them to leave. Officers will also have the authority to arrest anyone who threatens public safety. Joining me now with more is BC's Health Minister, Adrian Dix. Minister, thank you for making the time as always. Good morning, Rosemary. So why this change? Because it's a, it's a big one. Uh, why did you make this decision? Well, we strongly believe that addiction is a health care issue and have put significant measures in place to assist people, especially treatment. But that doesn't mean anything goes. As the Premier uh, has said, uh, we, uh, public drug use, for example, in parks where children play, in playgrounds, in front of small businesses, in coffee shops, and in hospitals, is uh, not allowed, not permitted. And this change, uh, change in our agreement with the federal government and the pilot, will allow police to do what they need to do to both move people along, to potentially seize drugs uh, if required, potentially, if it escalates, to arrest are necessary in order to provide those protections. In addition to that, we're taking even more steps to assist people with treatment and other supports and taking action to ensure healthcare workers are protected in the hospital. So, so Minister, does this mean that the decriminalization pilot project has failed? No, it means that we're making adjustments. Last fall, we put uh, very similar changes in place. Uh, the, there's an injunction at the BC Supreme Court that hasn't allowed us to proceed with that. So we're taking these actions to ensure that public safety is protected. Uh, drugs will continue to be decriminalized in people's private homes. We don't want people not calling 911, for example, because they're concerned about arrest if someone is in trouble, for example. They're not, uh, it continues to apply, for example, in the 50 overdose protection sites, rapid access clinics, drug checking sites, and so on. So we're continuing to have that in place. We think it's important and continues to be important to reduce the stigma and ensure a healthcare response to these issues. But we have to ensure that public safety is protected that's why these actions were taken uh, on Friday. So just so I understand, if someone is uh, seen caught uh, doing drugs in a public space, will the first response from police be to arrest them or will there be an attempt to try and remove them from the area or bring them somewhere else? Uh, yeah, the first response will be to have people move along to say that this is not allowed in this uh, in this public space. There is direction uh, to police and prosecutors in this regard, and this is what police want. They want the means to be able to have people move along if required, if required, and if it escalates to seize uh, the drugs, if required to arrest, but principally to move people along. And the police have told us that they don't feel they have that authority now, and that's why this change is being made. You, you said people can do this in their private homes. What about people who are unhoused, people experiencing homelessness, who uh, may be addicted to drugs and don't have anywhere to go, and now that they're decriminalized, feel that they should be able to do this wherever needed? Well, uh, where people are legally sheltering, so it's in your private home or where people are legally sheltering, they're allowed uh, to have uh, illicit drugs and to use in those circumstances, uh, but not in, uh, in public spaces. What, what do you say, and I, I know that you've heard this criticism, Minister, that, that this will drive people uh, into the shadows, that this will lead to more deaths from toxic drug overdoses, uh, because the adv you know, people that push for harm reduction believe that this was sort of the beginning of the answer. What, what do you say to them? Well, the, this is uh, only a, a part of the answer to address the stigma around drug use. We don't want people not seeking care because of that stigma. We've put in place more than 600 new treatment beds, part of our response. 49 uh, counseling pro programs supported. On Friday, we announced significant increases in services, for example, Dr. Julio Montaner's Hope to Health program and other programs. And so we, we continue to take those steps. But I think it's important uh, for everybody, including people who use drugs, to understand uh, what the rules are. 
And so we wanted to take action to reduce stigma, and this continues to do this. But I think most people would agree that, uh, uh, that being able to use drugs anywhere, uh, an idea that anything goes in terms of the use of drugs, is uh, not acceptable with respect to public safety, whether it's in uh, a hospital room or other places. I might add, yeah. that what we're seeing is a significant increase in toxicity of the drug supply. It's continuing and a shift away from injection to inhalation as the preferred method of drug of illicit drug use. And these present particular problems, particularly in indoor public spaces. Yeah, Health Canada obviously is, is the one who I think has to give you permission to do this. Do you have a sense of whether that will happen and, and how quickly that could happen? Uh, our expectation is that it'll happen quickly. The Premier has talked to uh, the Prime Minister, my colleague, uh, Mental Health and, and Addictions Minister Jennifer Whiteside has talked to the Federal Minister. We believe that will, uh, it will happen quickly, that the Federal Government will be supportive of this. This is distinct. As you know, we passed legislation last fall to do basically this, mm -hmm. and that has been held up in the courts. Yeah. We don't believe that will be the case with this, uh, with this action because it's under the Federal law, and that law has been challenged many times, and we don't expect that we expect the federal law will be held held uh, 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 in force in this case. It, it, just one last question about, you know, how you know that, that this is working, because as, as you well know, there were uh, there was a record toxic drug deaths in 2023, 2,511 people died. Uh, and I just wonder whether you still, why you still believe that decriminalization is part of the solution. And I hear you on all the other parts that you've put in place, but why you still believe that this makes sense? Well, we think we need to reduce the stigma. Look, the, the uh, drug supply is toxic, and that really kicked up during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we have to take every step possible to assist people, and that's what we're doing. That's why you see uh, the increases, the uh, number of overdose prevention sites, which have been proven effective in preventing deaths. That's why you see this very significant expansion in treatment and other measures. Why we uh, we have uh, pursued a prescribed alternative program that uh, that saves lives and helps keep people, uh, keep people safe. So those measures continue. Yeah. This is a, a North American problem. You know, deaths yeah. in Alberta increased by 17% last year. They have a different approach than we do. So what we have to do is continue to directly assist people yeah. who are dealing with addiction at the same time, ensuring that the public is protected. Health Minister Adrian Dix, so appreciate making the time as, uh, as you do very often for me. Thank you so much. Anytime, Rosemary, take care. Thank you.